How to charge for your bookkeeping services. Should you be charging hourly or a flat monthly rate? And also, how do you collect payment? Are you using a payment processor, accepting checks? I teach you how to start a bookkeeping business in less than 30 days with no experience. My name is Zach Pascarello, and I have had my own bookkeeping business for the past three years, and I've been making these videos every single day just so I can teach you what I've learned. And I'll be honest with you, figuring out how to charge Clients for my bookkeeping services took me a long time to figure out, but I'm about to share all of the secrets that I've learned, all of the tips and tricks that I've developed over the past three years so that you can get more clients and optimally charge them. That way you can make as much money as possible. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel because I'm posting new videos every single day. And then finally, if you want to schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me, there's actually a link in the description of this video. You can schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting. I would love to mentor you and teach you how to start your own bookkeeping business. Okay, let's not waste any time. We're gonna jump right into how to charge your clients for your bookkeeping services. So we're gonna talk about two things here. First of all, how do you collect payment? And then second of all, how do you actually price and quote your services? So first of all, collecting payment, you gotta use a payment processor. I always give my clients three or four options for paying me. First of all, they can mail me a check, that's standard, no extra fees associated with that. Second of all, they can set up ACH direct deposit, but they're going to need to do that straight from their bank. So if they don't already have that set up, they probably don't know how to do that, which is fine. You can also accept ACH transactions, but you're going to need to use a payment processor to, to do that. I use Stripe and QuickBooks to accept payments. QuickBooks only charges 1% for ACH transactions. So I use QuickBooks to accept ACH transactions or ACH transfers. And then I use Stripe to accept debit cards and credit cards, but Stripe charges 3% and I pass that along to my clients as a convenience fee. So if they wanna pay with an ACH transfer, I charge them 1%. If they wanna pay with a credit card or a debit card, I charge them 3%. And if they don't wanna pay the extra convenience fees, they can mail a check. Now, here's an interesting idea. Should you give your clients a discount if they set up for automatic recurring payments? I think it's a good idea because once you get 30 clients, you're going to spend a lot of time every single month sending them an invoice and tracking down payments. So if you can get them set up on automatic monthly recurring payments with a debit card or a credit card, maybe consider waiving that 3% fee or even give them an additional 1% discount because if you can guarantee that they're gonna pay every month, hassle-free, no work required on your end, that's going to save you a lot of time, maybe not in the beginning, but definitely as you grow your business and get 30, 40, 50 clients, it becomes an administrative nightmare. Trust me, I have 40 clients right now. It becomes an administrative nightmare every single month, tracking down payments, sending out invoices, sending reminders. So consider setting up a discount for automatic recurring payment. Okay, now that's all pretty standard, no real discussion about that, but let's talk about now, should you be charging your clients hourly or a fixed monthly rate? So let's first talk about hourly. So this is the easiest way to charge clients because there's no quoting or estimating involved. So it's easy, but it's less ideal because I don't know about you, but I felt like an employee still whenever I was working hourly for my clients, especially because in the beginning, I'll be honest, I significantly underquoted people. I figured I was working at Amazon as a manager. I was making like 30 bucks an hour. So it's like, if I can find somebody to hire me for bookkeeping at 30 bucks an hour, I would be happy to take that. But you're a business owner right now. You've got to stop thinking like an employee. Employees make 30 bucks an hour. Business owners, you've got to make at least $50 an hour, if not 70 to $100 an hour. So in the beginning, you might need to start low like I did, but I honestly wish that I did not start as low as I did. However, if you're struggling to get clients, maybe consider taking on your first client at $25 an hour or $30 an hour, depending on where you live. So if you live in a high cost of living area, maybe charge 30 or 35 bucks an hour. If you live in a low cost of living area, maybe 20, 25 bucks an hour, only for your first client. Once you get your first client, then you can increase your rates. And only if you're struggling to get that first client. If you're not worried about getting your first client, if you're confident in your sales and marketing, consider starting at $50 an hour. That's where I was for my first year. After I got my first client, 
I bumped up my rates instantly to $50 an hour. And then in my second year, I increased my rates to $70 an hour. With all that being said, slowly build up your calendar and your book of business. If you're charging hourly, get five to 10 clients at 50 bucks an hour. And then once you're comfortable with how many clients you have, bump up those rates because maybe I don't need as many clients. I'd rather just make more money per hour, but get five or 10 clients first at 50 to 60 bucks an hour. And then you can bump up your services to 70, 80, 90 bucks an hour. In my opinion, it doesn't make any sense. I have zero clients right now, but I'm charging $90 an hour. No one's hiring me. You're, you're not doing yourself any good. So lower your rates in the beginning if you're struggling to get clients, but you gotta increase those rates as soon as you get five to 10 clients. And also every year, don't be afraid to increase your rates and work it into your contract. So have a client agreement. In that client agreement, state, that every year we reevaluate our services and the industry as a whole, and we will adjust our rates accordingly, maybe potentially five to 10% per year. Work that into your contract. That way in January next year, whenever you increase the rates, there are no surprises. There are no freakouts. And look at inflation. Look at cost of living. This past year, inflation went up a crazy amount. So let your clients know, hey, I got to increase my rates four to six percent this year just to keep up with inflation and cost of living. If anybody fires you, it's not because you increased your rates. It's because they wanted to fire you already. And now you're just giving them an excuse to fire you. So don't be afraid of losing clients because I have increased my rates every year for the past three years. And I've only lost two clients directly after increasing my rates. And they were both two clients that I was honestly happy to see go because we did not have the best relationship. We just did not work together very well. So don't be afraid to increase your rates every year and don't be afraid to increase your rates as you get more business. Additionally, I offer an hourly rate for miscellaneous services. So I have a fixed description of services that I offer. I do bookkeeping. I categorize your transactions, I reconcile your accounts, and I generate your financial statements. But if you want me to create your bills or create your invoices or pay your bills or deposit your checks or come to your office for whatever reason, you can charge a miscellaneous service fee for additional services. That's how I have it worded in my contract. So I typically charge people a fixed monthly rate and then I charge people $70 an hour for any additional services outside the services that I offer. Okay, now that's gonna get us, that's gonna lead us into monthly fixed services. And I think this is the best way to do it. However, this takes some learning and some experience in order to quote people properly for monthly services. So I offer a three tier service. So I have like my cheapest package, my middle package, and my most expensive package. From my experience, what I've learned through sales and marketing, that's always the best option. You want to make your most expensive package like that gold offering. Like not a lot of people are going to do that, but that encourages people to take that middle offer. So if you only have two, then that, that most expensive offer doesn't look as appealing. But if you have three, you tack on a really expensive one. All of a sudden that middle offering looks a lot more appealing. So for example, for me, I offer $250 as my lowest service offer and that's just for brand new businesses like businesses that are less than a year old and don't have a lot of expenses my middle package is 500 dollars a month for larger businesses more experienced businesses who have more detail and more complex transactions and then my most expensive package is a thousand dollars a month nobody really ever buys that package but it's just there to encourage people to buy that 500 dollars a month Okay, so whenever it comes to quoting people, you need to have a strategy for figuring out how much to charge people. And it all depends on their workload. So you need to look at their bank statements and their QuickBooks account. That's why during the sales call, you need to tell them at the end of the sales call, I'll give you a golden piece of advice. So every sales call, I end with this. My average client pays me between three and $400 a month. But in order to give you an exact quote, I'm going to need to see your three most recent bank statements and I'm going to need to be invited to your QuickBooks online account. This gives you the ability to see the size and complexity of their business. That way you can judge how much you're going to charge them. And in the beginning, I had a very simple method for doing this. I would count up everybody's transactions per month and I would charge them $2 per transaction. 
that worked okay in the beginning, but I actually found that I was significantly undercharging people. And I just learned that through having an experience. So I'm sharing this experience with you so that you don't make the same mistake I did. I would actually recommend charge people $3 per transaction with a bare minimum of $250. So even if they only have 50 transactions per month, don't charge them 150, set that bare minimum at $250 because you don't even wanna waste your time working with the client for a hundred or hundred and fifty dollars a month. I promise you it's not worth your time. You might think right now it's a good idea. Once you get 30 clients, those clients that only pay you a hundred or hundred and fifty dollars a month, they're going to be such a hassle to work with. So you need to get at least two hundred and fifty dollars a month, multiply the number of transactions they have by three. And if it's even close to two hundred or two hundred and fifty transactions per month, have confidence that you can quote these people 500 or 600 or even $700 per month. I just onboarded most recently my largest client for $800 a month and they were happy to have me doing their bookkeeping because most CPA firms charge a lot more than us and most importantly, they don't do a good job. So as long as you do a good job, you can pretty much charge whatever you want between 500 and and $1,000 for your monthly bookkeeping. And the best thing is, is as you get invited to their QuickBooks account, you can actually see how much money did they pay their previous bookkeeper, how much money did they pay their previous CPA firm. So you can already get a good idea to see how much they're willing to, to spend for your bookkeeping services. But it all comes down to your experience, how many clients you have, what services do you offer, how much money are you looking to make. If you have one or two clients, maybe be willing to take on an extra client for only $250 a month or only $50 an hour. If you already have 20 or 30 clients, increase your prices. Only accept $500 a month clients or charge $100 an hour. If you're already busy enough, there's no point in taking on more work for not that much more money. So it all depends on your situation. I hope this was helpful. Ultimately, at the end of the day, you need to decide how much are you willing to get paid for your services.